Welcome to Alpha Wolf Trading. Do you know that there's over 12,000 stocks or companies that trade on the OTC? Between the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, you have over 7,000 companies. But us as retail investors, we wouldn't know that unless we were researching. Because why? Wall Street focuses on the elite, the big companies. And where the retail investor has their advantage is in small and micro cap stocks. Why? Because you have the opportunity to speak directly with leadership. That is what this is all about here at Alpha Wolf Trading. We're trying to find the hidden gems and we interview the executive teams of companies that we think meet the parameters to be those hidden gems. I also want to make sure you understand that this is not a paid for promotion. I collect no compensation for the interviews I do here. These companies that I interview have been identified as potential opportunities for me and the members of Alpha Wolf Trading to receive a higher than average return on our investment. These companies I have identified either because of a technical setup on a chart, a fundamental change within the organization, the management team, new products, all kinds of different things that actually lead me here. But what do I think is the most important? Leadership. And that is why I do these interviews. I want to understand what drives the person that is leading the charge. I want to feel their passion. I want to understand their vision and the strategy that they're going to use to achieve success. That is what these interviews are for. I want to understand the share structure and the cap table, the size of the TAM, the total addressable market. This is the opportunity to learn all of those things. So sit back and enjoy. And if you learn anything from today's interview, do us a favor. Subscribe to the Alpha Wolf Trading YouTube channel. Hey everybody, Tim from Alpha Wolf Trading coming at you with a, another CEO interview. This one is very unique for me because it's an international company. The name of the company is HeartCore and they are traded on the NASDAQ recent IPO. HTCR is the symbol and I am pleased to have uh, Sumitaka Kano, the CEO of HeartCore here to uh, Explain what Hardcore does, number one. Maybe give us a little a background on, on you and you know how you got here. And um, we'll take it, we'll take it from there. First off, thank you for coming in to do the interview. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for uh, introduction. So my name is Sumitaka Kano, but uh, my uh, formal name is Yamamoto. Uh, I got married. I, ha I, ch I have to change my name to Yamamoto, but uh, everybody called uh, Sumitaka Kano. And uh, we are a software company. So we provide uh, several software such as uh, CMS, content management system, or RPA, robotics process automation, uh, or um, the process mining, task mining. So uh, we focus on the software area for enterprise company. So oh, fortunately, we have over 900 enterprise clients, such as Toyota, Honda, Sony, Panasonic, um, very uh, well-known brand we have. Um, the, uh, we be, after we become a public company in Nasdaq, we start Go IPO business. This means that we take uh, several um, private company into a uh, U.S. stock market, such as NASDAQ or NYC. Um, this is a great sto uh, success story for us uh, this year. Um, uh, uh, my background is very unique. Uh, when I uh, graduated my university, I joined uh, Japan Air Force because, uh, unfortunately, I watched a Top Gun movie, the first one in my university. So that was amazing jobs. It's a, but that's cool. So I want to become a pilot at that time. So that's why I joined uh, Air Force. And of course, I became a pilot. But 
Japan Air Force is really different from uh, uh, Top Gun. So um, I, uh, it's just a boring work. So I leave the uh, Air Force at two, two and a half year and I start my own business. And I have a big boom, uh, the snowboard. I create a snowboard market in Japan uh, around 30 years ago. After uh, that, I joined Blow Vision. This is a, a former Formula, uh, NASDAQ public company. They acquired this two years ago. And uh, I learned a lot of things from uh, Blow Vision, how to uh, create the enterprise software, how to get the enterprise customers. And after leaving the Blow Vision, I start my own business hardcore. So I have uh, over 20 years experience for all this industry, IT industries. This is a brief background. And, par and primarily based in, in, in Japan. The, the, the uh, bulk of your customers are in Japan, correct? Yes, mostly uh, we operated Japan uh, around uh, 12 years. So main customer is uh, in Japan. However, we acquired one a big company last year. So we, we are now global. We have uh, seven uh, different countries uh, branch. What a fantastic story. So you started out, you saw Top Gun, you went, decided you wanted to be an <laughs> Yes. And then he figured out it's a little different than, than Top Gun, not quite Top Gun. So <laughs> <laughs> you started your own business there. Uh, so that's quite a journey, right? Mm -hmm. And then yeah, to, yeah. Get the, to get the, the customers that you have now, I mean, Panasonic, and th those are some big names. Honda, these, these are big names. Yes, Toyota, Honda, Sony, Panasonic, uh, Hitachi. So uh, everybody knows the Japanese brand. So all, all of them are our existing client. <laughs> That's fantastic. So uh, and then you, you set your sights uh, on expanding out to the, to the US. Yes, yes, exactly. Right. OK. And you that that actually developed in uh, 2022 right that's when you came public in 2022 yes 2022 in february okay and that was i mean you had to go through covid did covid impact ah uh, yes um we have a, a big impact for the cms division because um uh, so many clients have to um, work remotely, um, but we fortunately we uh, have uh, RPA and the process mining, task mining. This is a DX, so all enterprise company have to change uh, scheme structures to uh, remote work. So our software is good for the uh, remote work. Um, Yes. Did, you, did you write the software? Did you do the coding and all that? Or did you hire a team to do that? Oh, uh, yes. Previously, uh, I was a programmer. So I can programming. I, I, I was. <laughs> I don't know now. But uh, so right now, we hire a very senior programmer from, from uh, worldwide. So we hire from Portugal and Russia, Ukraine, India, many different countries right now. Okay, and to be clear with the so the Go IPO, I want to clarify what that is. Is your if there's an international company that has interest to list in the United States, you help them achieve that goal. Yes, exactly. So because no yeah. matter where they're at, that doesn't not it's not just Japanese companies. It could be Chinese. It could be Dubai, which is what you just. We talked before we hopped on that you actually have a very big client out of Dubai that you're. Talking. Yes, yes. Uh, we uh, mostly our client uh, coming from Japan. However, we expand uh, this business uh, outside Japan. So we got a client in Dubai and Laos and the Singapore, many different countries right now. Okay, and you just had uh, John brought it up earlier that you had a, a seminar uh, was it a seminar or a an event where you invited companies that potentially are interested in, in listing in the United States and how many how many did you wind up having attend yes uh, over 100 attended we had and uh just a, we have a 70 uh, private company joined the seminar okay okay and you just had another company 
which I'm going to meet with later today, that actually has made that move to the NASDAQ, right? Yes. And that, and that was, you helped make that, facilitate that happening. Yes, yes, of course. We uh, arrange and we uh, consult all of uh, IPO process. Okay. So it's not just, so Go IPO is your very fast growing component now, mm -hmm. but you also have robotics, right? Software. You have customer, let me see here, customer experience management software. You've got content management software. And let's see, what else do we have here? Yes, That's process robotic. mining. Yeah, task mining, process mining. That is, that we uh, have a, so we have a different uh, software. However, uh, enterprise company requests us to uh, provide a different kind of uh, software. They, they, all of them are uh, our customers' request. <laughs> so, but the, our main business is we provide the CMS, content management system for all the website. Um, this is uh, all software revenue. It's come uh, seventy percent software revenue coming from uh, CMS. Okay, but the go but the go IPO is 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 rapidly growing. Yes, quite rapidly growing. So uh, I, I cannot disclose uh, how many percent, how many revenue in this year. However, the big big grow. Okay, so is there? For that business, for the Go IPO business, is there anything that's proprietary that, that protects you? I mean, what's to stop someone else from trying to do this the same thing? Uh, yeah, so that is a, a good question. But uh, depend on the company and depend on the country. So we have uh, many um, different stories. So we have to coordinate, we have to, uh, sometimes it's a big challenge. And uh, right now, Japanese uh, company become a NASA public company. It was a big, big challenge right now because uh, the government has very strictly, uh, created strictly rules right now. So uh, it's a, a whole stage of change. So. Okay, so so that's that's, Constant. Is it the government there is making the rules? Uh, yeah, so Jap I think I don't like Japanese government. They are very stupid, <laughs> sorry. Because uh, for example, it's a cryptocurrency. Japan is the number one developed country at that uh, previously, but the Japanese government has a very strict rule for uh, uh, cryptocurrency. So in Japan, all all company cannot uh, provide cryptocurrency because that is a stupid ta tax. If they issue the um, currency, that's not money, but government charge 50% tax. No selling, just hold 50% every year. It's crazy. Wow. That is crazy. That is, yes. If a company has a 1 million cryptocurrency, they have to pay a 50% tax this year. And the next year, still have 1 million cryptocurrency. Again, have to pay 50% tax. What? It's a stupid tax. But uh, yes, indeed, this uh, government set these rules, th this kind of rules. So at the IPO business, all same. Government set the stupid rules. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. you know, Japan has had has had a uh, a, a um, dwindling. Uh, what do I want to say? Underpopulation, right? Mm -hmm. in Japan. Yes, yes, exactly. And maybe that's why they think they need to, to take fifty percent. <laughs> of your money I, I don't know because they're they're probably running out of i mean they don't have that increased population to tax right so they've got to find another way to tax and i yes. guess exactly so japanese government still increasing all taxes every everywhere that's that is incredible to me that is that is insane 
right? Yeah. Uh, so Panasonic and those types of companies, are they still, is Japan still their, their main headquarters or are they moved or do most of those big companies move elsewhere? Um, uh, depend on the company, of course, but the main um, very uh, global companies such as Sony, Panasonic, uh, Toyota, try to move headquarters to uh, worldwide. Right, right. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, one of the things I love about, about what your mission, your... Okay. So uh, my mission, my company's philosophy is make customer happy. So our mission is uh, make our client or our partners happy. So um, uh, indeed, so happiness, uh, every uh, company has a different happiness. So, but uh, our mission is providing happiness. But this is, I think if I'm, if I'm reading this correctly, that's how you've gotten so diversified, right? Because yes. if a customer comes to you and says, hey, you know, we're going to get into this and we would like you to help us go there. Mm -hmm. And then even though it's not something you've done, you will find a way to do it and then and then do it, right? Yes, that's correct. Absolutely right. <laughs> that's all about making the customer happy. Yes. Right. <laughs> which I think is a fantastic philosophy. I, how can you go wrong with that kind of uh, mentality, right? The whole, it's all about the customer. Yes, exactly. Sometimes we have to pay a uh, big, big money for uh, the customers. However, we never give up. So. <laughs> <laughs> to be talking, it might be worth mentioning the retention that you guys have, the high retention. Oh, yeah, I was going to bring that up. Thanks, John. Uh -huh. Yeah, so these companies, and we've named some big names, but your retention on those on those companies that you do business with is extremely high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like what percentage of, of retention do you have? We have over ninety five percent retention rate. So this means once our client is using our software, they never leave. <laughs> ninety five percent is amazing. Uh, yeah, that is amazing. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, is your software? I mean, you once you give them the software you create, is there a lot of maintenance, or is there, you know, do they need, you know, cust do they need customer support on your end? I mean, how does it typically work? Oh, so uh, depends on the client. We support everywhere. So uh, customer support or um, membership um, or uh, IR site everywhere. Okay, what are your what are your margins? Margin. So uh, for the software business, we have around seventy to eighty percent margin. Okay, seventy to eighty percent margin for the software. Yes. And then the IPO go mm. go IPO. Uh, that you get you get warrants mm -hmm. for the yes. common stock and also a fee to, to help them get to the NASDAQ. Yes, we typically charge 500,000 initial cost. So this includes everything. And after uh, they become a public, we charge 3% warrant from their market cap. So this is good money, good profit for us. Okay. And you have the, the company I'm meeting with later today, I think is a real estate uh, company, right? Sy Shyla. Yes. I think it is. And successful IPO there. And you have a piece of that. That's, that's a pretty, I mean, I think that's a great model, right? Um, yeah. And Sumitaka, it might be worth mentioning the amount of revenues that you guys generated this past first quarter as a result of the Sheila IPO and, the other Go IPO initiatives. I mean, you guys almost surpassed 2022 revenues just off Q1, 2023. Yes, yes, exactly. So uh, our revenue, uh, last year revenue is about uh, 8 million. But uh, just for first quarter, we uh, achieved 8.6 million. Bigger than last year, full year. <laughs> 
Uh, so was the IPO go or go IPO? Was that because a customer, a client came to you and said, "Hey, we need help getting." Is that how that developed? Yes, yes, that's correct. <laughs> you you you're kind of like um, you're kind of a lucky guy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of step into stuff and it it works out, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I wrote a book. It was number uh, Amazon number one selling book. So the, the title is How to Become Nasdaq Public Company for Japanese uh, client. And, and, it's, and it's a number one seller? Yes, it, it was number one selling in was Amazon Japan. <laughs> so what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't have a lot of spare time, do you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so you have it was it was it was six hundred customers at one point. Now you're up to nine hundred in in Japan. So uh, total uh, only CMS we have a six hundred, but uh, totally we have a nine hundred. Totally, you have nine hundred. Yes. And how long have you been set up here in the states? We start U.S. business uh, around that twenty twenty two. So two years ago. Uh, one yeah yeah just start one years ago. Okay, about one year ago. And are you based here? Are you here in the U.S.? Yes, I'm in uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, boy, that's going through a rough time right now. Uh, <laughs> I was just reading about a lot of companies have been, a lot, a lot of people are exiting San Francisco because of the homeless and all the stuff that's going on over there. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Everybody leaves right now. Yeah, that's a, that's a rough, that's a rough, uh, I hope they don't raise your taxes to 50% over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I hope so. <laughs> All right, so we're, let's talk about the fact that you're, number one, you're profitable, mm -hmm. right? Yes, we are profitable, so we don't need to raise money. We never burn cash. Uh, yes. Okay, so you don't need to raise money. You've got good margins. The growth, what you just said, you just had incredible growth. You're going to outdo what you just did, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. For, correct. That was for the whole year. You're going to do that in a quarter, right? Yeah, yes. <laughs> so you've got rapid growth. Mm -hmm. You've got, and, and then you're also looking at potential acquisitions. So yes, we are now trying to acquire several companies so we can announce very soon. <laughs> so you want to, is there a, do you have a, the one thing I didn't see, I didn't see any AI. I didn't, I didn't see an AI component. <laughs> is that something that is of interest to you at this point? Yeah, uh, yes, every client, our customer uh, want to uh, use AI. For website for or, or analyze uh, their process business process, so we have to provide the AI. However, the so AI is still kids, so we have somebody have to help to uh, create uh, content or uh, uh, help to analyze a uh, um, business flow. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Right. So uh, I mean, that's the thing with AI. Right? Uh, AI still needs human interaction. It needs somebody to put that data into so that that i mean they can ai refines it or makes it better right but somebody still has to input all that stuff right yes correct and make sure it's accurate mm -hmm. yes yes so i mean i think what's interesting is there are a lot of companies out there right now that are claiming ai mm -hmm. and they really don't have an ai product right so that's that's something that I'm sure you're looking really hard at. Yes, of course. So uh, all company have to develop the AI functions. So we hired uh, around roughly one to see six people who just involved AI development. So okay. yeah, for the future, so every company, every biz, um, jobs, um, AI takes. Instead of humor. Good question, because 
you're you're involved with robotics mm -hmm. and now you're looking at AI, right? Yes. As you look at things from today, mm -hmm. do you get concerned that there are going to be a whole lot of jobs that are going to basically disappear because they'll be able to be done by either a robot or AI in a much more efficient manner. Yes, for it's a repeatable work, or boring work, or daily work. So or, or this kind of a work AI take. However, it's a um, like a, a it's a restaurant. It's a food. Yes, the good chef and the bad chef. The AI is always a bad chef. So uh, still remaining uh, very special work. And uh, um, new jobs, it's coming out after uh, everybody using AI. So don't worry about the jobs. I you think. don't worry about the jobs. I just saw like yesterday, I saw a robot that does logistics. It essentially picks up boxes, puts, you know, puts them in the back of the truck, delivers them. I mean... It was just a thing on two wheels and had two arms, right? And I look at that, any, any repetitive motion job that is out there, that any manual labor job is, there's a robot that does it. Yes, of course. It's a, a repeatable, it's a fixed, uh, they have a fixed rule. So easy to do by AI. But the right. complex, it's a, for example, it's a, we provide a Go IPO consult, consultation. So uh, I think this is really uh, difficult because there are many, it's uh, like, a, um, like a black hole or uh, bad uh, hurdles. So th this is tough work. So AI doesn't uh, work very well right now, but right. I, I'm not sure for the future. Right. So it's interesting. I just was wondering if that was a was a space. I mean, I don't know that that necessarily is a space mm -hmm. that I would be trying to acquire a company because it is so hot right now that everybody yes. probably thinks their valuation is way up here and it's actually way down here, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> we should wait for a couple of years. Yeah. Okay. But there are other areas that you have in mind that are complementary to uh, so we are a software company. So we are now looking for uh, a good uh, software um, providers. Okay, okay. And what 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 is your what is your goal? If you were to look out the next six to twelve months, right? What would you feel as though we've achieved what, what we've set out to do? It, what what is what are the measurables that you? would have for the next six to 12 months? So uh, the short term, so uh, we have a very, very good growth rate. Uh, I cannot uh, disclose right now, but uh, several times than last year's revenues. Um, the long term goal is uh, quite different. So uh, we focus on the customer happiness. So we always providing uh, customer happiness. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a long time goal. Is the long-term goal is to make the customers happy. Yes, and we grow. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is like this the simplest thing. I mean, it sounds like the simplest thing, right? Just gonna just make your customer happy. Yes, right. yes. a lot of a lot of companies struggle to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, easy to say, but difficult to do. Very difficult to do. And yes. what? how do you attribute your success to being able to continue to make your customers happy? Uh, so um, depend on the, yeah, of course, depend on client. Every customer has a different uh, feelings for happiness. So we have to provide the light things to light the uh, times. <laughs> So you're constantly learning more and more about your your customers so that you know how to make them happy. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. I, I, I mean, it seems like such a simple thing to adopt, 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, what are the challenges for you? Challenge. Uh, so we, every time I uh, challenge, <laughs> but uh, my uh, biggest challenge is uh, we establish a uh, U.S. market and the global market for hardcore. So this is big challenge right now. But it, but I, I would I would suggest that bringing companies to IPO and is that because you know you did it yourself successfully and you learned all the all the all the stuff you were going to have to go through and I mean I, I just find that fascinating that you you made a business out of taking companies or helping them go go to IPO mm -hmm. yes. So uh, after become a public company, uh, our client, so they, uh, yes, of course, thanks for us. So this is great happiness for a client. <laughs> oh, I love it. I absolutely love your, I just like your whole model. And, mm -hmm. and um, the, that stick ratio of 96% is very impressive, right? Mm -hmm. And you've been doing this, you haven't been doing this just for a couple of years. You've been doing this for, was it, did you say 30 years? Is it almost 30 years? Uh, yes, yes. 30 almost years. That, yes. So you're pretty, you're, you're pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, John, is there anything that, that you can, you think we should expand on here? Uh, just so everybody knows, John Yee uh, works with Gateway. Uh, IR, they're the IR firm for hardcore. This is unusual. I don't typically have the uh, the IR firm on, but John is the is the one that actually brought hardcore to my attention. He's brought several companies that are of interest to my attention, and um, this one I really like. And John, you know, I asked John actually to be here. Just in case there was the, any kind of a language hiccup between, which we're doing fine, but um, that's why I asked John to be here. And John likes this story. What what do you like about it, John? Yeah, appreciate you having me on here, Tim. I would just say you guys, first of all, covered everything that I can think of. I think every element of the hardcore story was certainly talked about in this call, which was great. I think it's just a very exciting story from an investment proposition perspective, right? Given the, the the kind of blue sky, blue ocean of the Go IPO, especially obviously hardcore at the center of their corporation is an enterprise software company, but given the, the nascent stage of where the company's at from a Go IPO perspective and the potential behind it, right? I mean, Sumitaka mentioned that, you know, around hundred individuals, over 70 companies attended their seminar, um, which took place in June, earlier in June of this year, which was two months ago. Um, there's a lot of interest of Japanese companies that want to go public here in the U.S. equity markets and Sumitaka and the hardcore team are trying to bridge the gap. So I think given the business model that they've created and the potential there, I think there's a lot of exciting excitement behind the hardcore story. And it's uh, safe to say, you know, with the, with the stocks trading at relatively speaking to the that potential, I would say, you know, somewhat undervalued. But so how many shares do you have outstanding fully diluted? Uh, I'm sorry. So you asked me. Are they total shares outstanding, fully diluted, including warrants or uh, converts? Twenty point eight million as oh, of uh, yes. As of what was that, John? I'm sorry. Yeah, twenty point eight million. Yeah, so very, John. You would agree with me, I'm sure. Uh, that's a very small amount of shares outstanding, right? There's not a lot of shares out there. What about insider ownership? Is there a good Good portion of insider ownership. Yes, I have over fifty percent uh, shares, and our management team has another uh, almost at twenty percent, so seventy percent. <laughs> Safe to say that uh, Sumitaka and the management team have a, a decent amount of skin in the game, right? So they're they're incentivized, they're aligned with a lot of shareholders. So, I mean, I'm sure Sumitaka would would agree that you know this is a very good entry point for you know relative to where they're trading, but. Yeah, over two thirds, over uh, 33 fourths, you know, seven, over 75% of the total shares outstanding are held by, you know, Sumitaka. Inside. Those, shares, those shares aren't going anywhere. <laughs> those shares, <laughs> those shares are, are, are sticking around for a while, mm -hmm. right? 
You have a very, you have a very ambitious man here, uh, driven, right? You, you, what gives you the passion to continue to do what you do? Making people happy? Is that what it is? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I always do that. And for the future, I, I will do it. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, I, there's, it's hard to find anything not to like about you. Mm-hmm. You know that? <laughs> Thank you. Uh I think you would be a, just a fascinating guy to get to, to continue to get to know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm going to have to go read your book now. Um, but uh, no, number one author, too. I mean, throw, throw that on top of uh, all this other stuff he's got going on. Pretty impressive. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> no, it's really impressive. Let me talk about the stock for the chart for a second here. Okay. So, from 2022, when you IPO'd, you know, you, you had to pop off of the IPO, and then it's been really, anybody can see this, it's been a steady decline, right? It's been from the upper left down to the lower right. And that trend actually broke, um, what was that, back in, Jan- when was this, hold on. So that broke, it really broke um, in the May, June area. I'm imagining that was from earnings? Yes, correct. Okay. So big earnings report. And I just want to check and see what the volume is. Let me look. These are, all, these are all a bunch of different indicators, but the only one that I really, really care about is uh, the volume. So let me see. Oh, that was, you had a big spike on that, uh, on that bounce. What's the average daily volume traded, John? Yeah, the three month average has been around 1.7 million. Okay. Well, that was a big volume day here though. Did uh, what almost 10 million? Oh no, 85 million shares. Is that right? 90 so. shares. Uh, that was a nice big, big volume day, right? Um, uh, I think so. That trend, the downward trend, has been broken. You had a nice pop off of your earnings. You just indicated that your next quarter is probably going to be pretty good, <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, and you've got you've done something here. You, the 50-day moving average, this is all technical terms, crossed above the 200-day moving average, which is called the golden cross. That's a very bullish move for technical people, right? So once a stock gets momentum in a certain direction, it's very difficult to change that momentum, especially if you continue to execute. So I'm looking at the, the the price of this stock and asking myself, what's the risk reward, right? You have a high margin business. You have no need to raise capital. You have um, a spirit of making your customer happy with a very high sticky rate. And I, and I think, <laughs> because I don't think there are a lot of companies in the U.S. that subscribe to that anymore. <laughs> making the customer happy. It's, it certainly seems that there is a lot of it as uh, the customer service levels have gotten very poor from, in my opinion. Um, so this, this entire business, the bringing the companies that are very interested in coming to the, I mean, I, I think you guys are onto something here. And I think this is a very, ex- potentially a very exciting time uh, so I guess what I would recommend, John, we talked about this prior. This is where I would typically say, go to the website and sign up for their email alerts, <laughs> right? So that they can keep abreast of what's happening with the company, put them on your radar. Uh, let me ask you this, John, if they called you, because I do have your website, you know, the HTCR gateway dot gateway.com. If they were to call you and say, Hey, I'd like to get updates on, you know, 
any SEC alerts or could you guys put them on that? Yeah, it's a great question. And currently that's something that's being in the works in the back end with respect to hardcore's corporate website. So that's being in development. What I would tell investors if they were to call right now is to first of all, leverage any sort of platform they're using right now. So for example, I use Capital IQ, which is a Bloomberg equivalent. And you know, through those types of software platforms, you're able to subscribe to certain companies and ticker symbols and get that uh, downstream news, whether it's an SEC filing or a press release or what have you, into is your that, Is that service that you just mentioned, is that um, you got to subscribe for that? Yeah, you don't have to pay for it. It's a premium subscription, but there are other complementary alternatives. I believe Seeking Alpha has one too, where I, I used to be subscribed to, you know, a multitude of companies and stocks and I'd be getting notifications based upon the dissemination of a press release or an SEC filing. So there are other complementary methods out there. Our firm personally, we use Capital IQ. But all that said, uh, it's in development right now in real time of the hardcore team working on the revamped website where investors will be able to subscribe to you know press release updates and SEC filings. Okay, perfect. And then um, I want so here's where here's where we're gonna kind of tear, taper it off. Where where what do you see in the next six to twelve months? that are potential catalysts for the stock? So you asked me? Yep. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, again, so please repeat me again. So what do you see? Do you, do you see anything on the horizon that could act as a, a catalyst for the stock price, the share price mm -hmm. in the next six to 12 months? Uh, so uh, that is a, a difficult question because I, I cannot disclo uh, disclose our uh, <laughs> revenue and the profit and the numbers, a, a, anything in here. But uh, uh, um, yes, our growth rate is quite a big and still keeping a very good numbers. We never bank cash right now. So that is a total. Uh, I can say I can I cannot say any additional, but going well. So look, I'm not asking you. I certainly don't want you to uh, incriminate yourself and, and and provide anything that is a non-public. Right? I mm -hmm. guess I'm the what I what I'm maybe I should rephrase the question. Maybe what I should say is, um, what should people be looking for that they could use as milestones mm -hmm. to to recognize that you are executing your strategy. Does that make sense? Yes. So, um, okay, so we uh, have, like now, go, for, for example, we have uh, six Go IPO clients right now, and we will engage additional few in uh, next month. So this is going well in uh, this year's revenues, big impact for this year's revenue. And uh, we officially announced, already announced, uh, one of our clients use this pack. The SPAC company already announced their market cap will, will be 1.2 billion. And we already have 3% warrant from them. This means we have 30%, 30 million uh, warrant from them, just a one single uh, customers. So 30 million, this is a 100% profit for us. So please imagine, last year, our revenue is, uh, of course, uh, below to uh, 10 million. However, it's just single client give me 30 million balance. So it's make a big, big profit and big, big revenue in this year. Okay. John, what, what, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, and Asumitaka hit it right in the head. That's absolutely correct. And I would just defer you, Tim, at this moment, August 2nd, to kind of go back to the first quarter earnings release that we issued. I think there's some anecdotal sentiment there from Sumitaka, kind of around how he foresees 2023 to play out. Obviously, he mentions the SBC Medical Group, which is the client that he was referring to, and the $32.4 million in warrants that Harcourt will be receiving as a result of that deal. I think in terms of non-GAAP KPI metrics, Tim, that you know, folks can kind of gauge to, to, to gauge success on hardcore would be kind of the go IPO uh, funnel. I mean, you know, we announced it six deals for the remainder remainder of the year are looking to be executed. And I think that's going to be uh, very 
a big weight on revenues as you know was reflected in Q1. Um, but all in all, I, I would say also, you know, be on the lookout for the next earnings cycle. Obviously, it's August 2nd. We have you know less than two weeks or, or so until hardcore is going to be filing its 10Q. And subsequent to that, you could obviously expect an earnings release too. So just be on the lookout for that. I would encourage uh, you know, folks to pay attention to this stock and you know follow the press releases as well because there's a lot of exciting things the in the future. Right. So you know what? I, I think that sums it up extremely well. I mean, look, I don't tell people what to buy or what to sell. All I do is present what I see as a good opportunity, right? And uh, try to get to know the person that's leading the charge, right? And that's, to, to me, very... You have a very exciting, you've had a very exciting journey it's, thus far. I think it's going to get more exciting uh, moving forward, right? So um, this is a, a feel-good kind of, I love the happy thing. I mean, that, that when I read that, it was such a simple thing, but it, to me, it resonates. It just makes sense, right? Make people happy. Uh, that's Part of what I do, the reason what I, I do what, what I do is there are a lot of companies that are small that nobody knows about that are really good companies doing really phenomenal good things. And nobody knows about them because Wall Street's broken. In my opinion, Wall Street is broken. They're, the funds are too big. They can't. They're not going to focus on these little guys. They can't because they can't even take a position in them. Mm -hmm. So it's like. How do you find the good companies that are, you know, you're all in the dollar area? Everybody will say on Wall Street, stay away from low price stocks because low price stocks are low price for a reason. They're garbage companies. That's not true. There are garbage companies that are trading for hundreds of dollars a share. And they're garbage companies. There are garbage. There are garbage companies that do trade in the pennies and in, in the one dollar area, but there's also some hidden gems and some game changers in those low price stocks. And the way I view it is, consumers, number one, have a lot of influence on whether a company survives. <laughs> right? That is ultimately who makes. I mean, if Walmart would have built a big Walmart and nobody went to it, there would be no Walmart today, right? It's the consumer that makes a company successful. So if people started to recognize, maybe instead of buying a $1,000 pair of Nikes that they don't need, they actually buy stock in a company that they believe in and support, right? And then that makes that company a bigger company that hires people. <laughs> and really, you're helping people. My goal is to help people, to help you, your company get successful so that you can hire more people and they can get stock options and become wealthy. <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, that's ultimately what it's about for me, is finding those good companies and helping them get to that next level. So that's it. I, I want to thank you for coming in and sharing your story. And then on the maybe after the the uh the quarter and you announce some stuff, maybe we can revisit and do an update and um kind of see what's happening then. Sound yeah. good? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. All right, hold on one second. I'm gonna stop recording on this. Give me one. Thanks for tuning in to today's interview. I hope you enjoyed it. Today we had Sumitaka Kano from Hardcore Enterprises, Inc. Ticker symbol HTCR, traded on the NASDAQ. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. And if you did, do us a favor. Give us a like. How about giving us a share? And while you're at it, why not give us a follow? Until next time, stay safe. Alpha Wolf Trading wishes you the very best of success.